No, I, I think you even tweeted something this morning where you were talking about the how confusing royalty statements from the labels are and what they're charging and what they're what they're recouping and it's not just that it's it it seems like it's not just that they're giving you so for example you know my first major placement this was really before streaming took off and i've still never gotten a a, a royalty check for that because granted some of it was sample clearance so that is something that they're charging against my account but then there were other fees like recording and all these other things that didn't seem fair to charge against me as the person who made the beat. Do you, do you see a lot of that? Absolutely. A lot of times producers not only have to stand behind. So that's sort of the next step besides just recouping at the producer's royalty rate is that you're also standing behind either the artist cost for the one song you produce or a lot of the times the entire album. And I mean, that's, that's another thing that I had to experience for myself. So a lot of times you have to stand behind the cost of the entire album. So the artist, is only recouping at his royalty rate. And he may have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars or even just paying bigger name producers than you, paying Southside or Metro or paying them $50,000. So they need to recoup $50,000 before you're gonna see another dollar, no matter what your advance was, which is just makes it a lot less likely to happen. Is that always clear when you sign a contract? It's in there ultimately, but I mean, it's buried in the royalties section. So when, when you see that in a, in an agreement for one of your clients, how do you tend to respond? Is that something that you've had luck pushing back against? It sort of depends. A lot of the times recently I've had surprisingly good luck. Just, just asking for that. Why do I have to stand behind the cause of the whole album? And they usually will will accept will agree to to changing that, or I'll ask for a higher fee because we're never going to send you back into royalties if you're standing behind the whole album. Yes, um, I had this conversation on the unsigned artist level with Dame, you know, because it, it's at least with a major your placement, you're, you're getting an advance. And when you're talking, you know, creator to creator, producer to artist, neither of you are signed and you're kind of trying to negotiate for like a $49 beat license. Right. Um, there's often this, this trap. I, I'm calling it a trap. That's my opinion that a producer will fall in where the recording artist will say, well, just give me the beat for free. You're going to get back in royalties. However, statistically speaking, most songs never generate a cent in in back end royalties and so you know going back to the original conversation it's it's kind of like the same thing you're never going to get your money back but in this scenario you don't get anything period because you're not getting an advance so i guess from your from your standpoint how should a producer navigate that that situation when an artist asks them to give the beat for free in exchange for backends, what should they know walking into that situation? The biggest thing is to, is to figure out how you're actually going to get paid. Uh, for example, in pretty much every agreement you get, you're gonna be paid semi-annually twice a year, once every six months. But am I really gonna rely on an artist to remember that he has to count to me on certain days? Most likely not. But a lot of these distributors allow for direct payments to third parties, direct payments to producers. So I would ask them, what distributor are they with? Can they add me to the DistroKid dashboard so I can see what's going on myself and get payments myself? Because then if so, it's not that bad. But if you're in a situation where the artist is getting paid, you have to rely on him to pay you. Yeah, it's most likely not happening. <laughs> <laughs>